talked about before, and I think is, you know, such a beautiful thing that you found this big connection to spirit and you can tell that it embodies everything in the class. What, what part of your childhood or adolescence did you feel that that connection was real? Hmm. It's an interesting question. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I think it must have always been there. My mom and dad got divorced when I was young. I went to a Presbyterian church. When my parents separated, my mom had picked up, um, she started practicing Buddhism and would chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, Nam Myoho Renge every single morning and night and do all these different types of um, practices with her gohans in. And I remember watching her wow. early on and I can tell, I could tell that she was doing something I couldn't figure out what it was, right? And that was the mind, the mind wanted to know, but you could feel that there was a, you know, the repetition in the room and the energy and the vibrational quality. The issue that I would have during that time is that I could feel that she was channeling from a place of anger. Mm. I could see it in her eyes and it created a lot of fear in me because I knew this strange duality or polarity of seeing someone connecting to a higher power divine, call it whatever mm. you will, call it, you know, a, a tree or a cloud or a plastic or divine or God or Buddha, whatever it is, you know, I could see it, but I could tell that the, the, the energy behind it was one that was incredibly low vibrational, right? So it made me scared. Yeah. And I remember that feeling. And then I went to, um, started going to a Catholic church and um, it never resonated with me, that type of organized religion, but I did respect the practice of these things, you know, but I think at the end of the day, you have to figure out what resonates with you and, you know, stay close to that as opposed to the projection of the, what the world's kind of organizations uh, inject or project into you. Um, otherwise, it's just not going to be sustainable, right? You'll be exhausted and feel all of, you know, things that are not yours. But um, I always found myself praying a lot at night. Mm. I don't know who I was praying to, but I remember as a young child, um, I didn't want to pray the prayers that were given to me. Um, it was just whatever it was that was, um, you know, wanting, wanting to move through that night. And I always felt this sense of being held and guided by something that was not in the third dimensional realm. It was not in the flesh. It's very hard to describe, right? And it's an interesting question because I think in a lot of these types of practices, anything that has to do with spirit, anything that's not in the you know, 3D form, in order to experience it, you really do have to have had your own personal experience with it. So it can- Absolutely. Be you know? Um, so there was just, you know, a lot of that when I was young, I remember just feeling into those spaces. Um, I do think a lot of the seeds that were, were planted um, for what the class is in terms of working in the idea of holding space for one another in a collective while having an own, your own individual experience um, started when I first started um, sitting in ceremony down in Peru. You know, you can allow somebody next to you to be having a cathartic experience and you don't have to turn to them and put your hands on them and say, you're going to be okay. Yeah. You know, but you can allow them to have it while you hold a space in the room while everyone is working into this idea that there is something that is so much bigger than us that you can connect to. If you work on that connection, you know, how you spend your time is important. And for me, that's what I, I really have tried to move into more and more as I get older and older is I, I refer to it as divine, but mm. to spend time with divine, with the divine or the archangel ancestral realm or whatever it is you call it, but to make time to spend time. Yeah. Right. And I think that's how you, personally it's all just from personal um my personal share but uh that's how you understand what it is um it can't really be 
taught to you or told to you. People can light the way. Yes. Having the experiences in yourself. And honestly, there's a lot of alignment that happens when you start doing that. You know, it's like yes. things to show up. You know, those times when you're like, can you believe that happened? Or well, your no, story that- is like riddled with synchronicities when you talk about everything that's happened in your life thus far. I, it's, I, I, there's so, even something that happened to me on Monday, it's just, it, you just, you can't make it up, you know? Yeah. You have to watch for the cues and the signals and, you know, it's, um, yeah, I hope that answered your question. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, absol- I, I agree in the sense that my most sacred time is in the morning when I meditate. And I know when one of my teachers said, you know, that time with the divine is just your time. And when you show up every day, the divine knows that you're showing up every day to be with it. And I've just always remembered that. And when I go into my meditation, I think how sacred is this, that we get to spend time together and just go into this silent space. And it is, you know, I have kids as well. And that is by far my favorite time of the day to just be silent and just be in that sacred, sacred space. And I totally agree. You have to have had your own occurrence in life to really know what that feels like. And it can be something little, but we can explain it. But when you actually have that connection, and it could be through a prayer or some sort of synchronicity or divine intervention, you know, you know, without a doubt that that, that realm is real. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I do think what you were saying about having this daily time that you make as for a sacred spiritual practice is important because I, I oftentimes see people getting a little bit hooked up in the idea that, you know, well, I prayed for three days and the thing didn't happen. Or, you know, you, you can, I always throw around different words because I think that word logos have so much different meanings and trigger so many different things in people. Yes. So prayer or speaking or whatever you want to call it, right? But um, offerings even, you know, um, it's that, that idea that happens where you think that you are in a surrender to something, right? You're, I'm, I'm releasing my force around willing this thing to happen. That's not happening. And it's probably not happening because it's not aligned for me. Right. And it becomes unsustainable. You become exhausted. Nothing works out. Every time you turn the corner, there's a no, mm. right? So you, you go and you say, I'm going to pick up a practice and I'm going to start doing this thing. And then you do it three or four times and something doesn't immediately show up. And then there's all of the, see, see, you know? And it's like, no, that was actually saying that you're offering something up and then waiting for the thing that you asked for to happen right yes that's the expectation you know we were talking about that a little bit before that's not a, a, that's not the same thing it's different it's not better or worse or good or bad it's just not the same thing right the tr- the true humility of being able to say i do not know please show me mm. as opposed to saying if you just give me this thing and this, if you just make this thing happen, you just make this relationship work or you just make this pain go away. I promise that I will not do that thing again. Right. That's different. Yes, you absolutely. Know? 